In scriptures, the human body is often referred to as the temple of God. Yet it is quite an uncommon privilege for any soul to attain the sacred abode that houses the divine, as it is truly a blessing to be reborn as a human being. On several occasions, Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about the rarity of this phenomenon. To be reincarnated in the human world is hard. You have to have enough human quality. You have to have affinity with the parents, yeah? And with the society, with the people around which you were born. And very difficult. To be a human, you need some merit. You have done something good in the past in order to be able, yeah? <laughs> to be able to pick a human birth. As a living temple of God, the human body is fully equipped with the miraculous wonders that can be awakened in those who are spiritually conscious and have complete faith in the Creator of all life. In Edia, Latin for fasting, is the human ability to live without food. Since time immemorial, there have always been individuals who can sustain themselves on prana, or the vital life force. Through the grace of the providence, Inediates, people who follow a food-free lifestyle, can draw the energy from nature to nourish themselves. They live on the chi, from the ground, or from the forest, and from the sun and from the air. They make use of all that. Or they live on love, on faith alone. These individuals are known as breatharians, solarians, or waterians, and they come from all walks of life, from different cultures and all corners of the world. Indeed, the possibilities and miracles in this life, as our benevolent Creator has designed for us, are endless. We only need to connect within to recognize our abounding largesse as God's children. Supreme Master Ching Hai has lovingly recommended a weekly series on Supreme Master Television to introduce those individuals of the past and present who have chosen to live food-free on Earth. May their spiritual stories enthrall you. May hearts be opened and horizons expanded. We now invite you to join us for the conclusion of our program, Master Fu Wei, a Watarian nun, on Between Master and Disciples. This program discusses the possibility of breatharianism, or living without eating food, and is not a full instruction. For your safety, please do not attempt to cease eating without proper expert guidance. Greetings, joyous viewers. Welcome back for part two of our show, Master Fu Hui, a Wadarian nun on Between Master and Disciples. Last week, we learned that breatharianism is a very well-known spiritual practice since thousands of years in China. The Taoist Book of Monthly Order of Food states, those who eat wind will be spiritual and gain longevity. Those who eat cereals will be wise in diverse ways, but will exhaust the mind from work. Those who eat grass, will be foolish and silly. Those who eat meat will have a lot of anger. Those who eat air will reach the spiritual level of eternity and gain the Tao. Therefore, the food we eat not only affects our personality and temperament, but also determines the length of our life. Taoism suggests that as a species, our appetite should be decreased, the flavor should be light, and the quantity should be less. And of course, directly eating wind and dew as well as absorption of the essence of the sun and moon will be the best advice for spiritual practice. Master Fu Hui, the founder of Dajing Benevolent Temple in Yuan Li in Formosa or Taiwan, was among those who absorbed the essence of the universe to sustain themselves without the need for food. We learned last week that she began her search for enlightenment when she was 35 years of age. 
She practiced ascetic penance in the deep mountains for many years. Master Fu Hui eventually returned to her hometown of Yuanli and built Daxing Benevolent Temple. She became widely known for the curative properties of her Buddha tea, which is the name she gave to water which had been blessed by the Buddha. One of her disciples told our Supreme Master television correspondent, About 10 years ago, a six-year-old Japanese girl got a rare disease and came to the temple with her aunt to pray for Buddha's help. After the interpreter's explanation, the Japanese girl who was a Christian expressed her willingness to drink Buddha tea every day and prayed to Master Fu Hui to help her have a successful operation. She brought one big bottle of Buddha tea back to Japan. Later, not only was her operation successful, and she was discharged after recovery, she also told the adults that during the operation, she saw a nun in a patched robe approach her and wrote the word peace on her chest. The nun patted her and left with a smile. No one else saw Master's transcendental body at that time. This miraculous story was also reported by the Japanese media. But it wasn't just Master Fu Hui's Buddha tea that attracted throngs of visitors and worshippers. It was also her compassionate teachings and her remarkable food-free lifestyle that appealed to many people. In the latter part of her life, Master Fu Hui suddenly stopped taking food and only drank some Buddha tea. When did Master Fu Hui start practicing Anidya? Did she announce it to the disciples? According to the senior monks, Master always took some fruit at noontime only. One day, the head monk brought some fruit to her, but she just waved her hand and indicated to him to take it away. The monks felt strange and thought Master did not have an appetite. After that, for one whole week, Master did not eat anything. Only then did everyone realize that Master had stopped eating completely. Since then, when Master meditated, she often stayed in a state of samadhi for half a month, even for 28 days. Even when she came out of samadhi, she didn't take any fruit, only some Buddha tea. Actually, from the time I became a nun, to the time Master passed away. She had always been in a food-free state. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television between Master and Disciples will return in just a moment. Welcome back to today's Between Master and Disciples. Let's continue with our feature on Master Fu Hui, a Wadarian nun. Master Fu Hui was food free for many years, living off the cosmic energy and some Buddha tea. She was a picture of health. Those who knew her remarked on her abundance of energy. How was Master's physical condition after she stopped taking in food? Master was always vigorous when she received people. She was as agile as a kid. You could not tell that she did not eat anything. Supreme Master Ching Hai once spoke about Master Fu Hui's good health during a lecture. Master Fu Hui's fame spread beyond the town of Yuan Li in another of her lectures, where she discussed the topic of sustenance for the human body, Supreme Master Ching Hai made reference to Master Fu Hui's ability to live food free. Master Fu Hui 
没有白，不是白的饭哈，还有营养那个哈，哎，叫米饭又便宜，还有芝麻粉，他这样子每天吃了好几十年，到现在，胖的要命，红，技工的老师，他也工作很多，像这种铁棍，他可以把它弄上面条一样。我也认识一个台湾的碧秋女，她几十年都没吃，那个天主教也有，铁铁山诺伊曼。在那个德国，他也没吃东西。我又认识另外一个在家的人，他也没吃东西，啊，非常聪明，武功超凡，自己可以看到谁修行多少，很多这种故事。Master Fu Hui was much loved by her disciples as a result of her teachings and lifestyle. Master herself was a good example for teaching disciples. She wore the same patched clothes all year round. Walked barefoot, meditated on the floor, and throughout the night. Master led an ascetic life just for saving sentient beings from illness and suffering. Master always taught us to live a frugal and simple life, cherish everything we have, take two meals a day, and not eat after noon time. She emphasized that we should practice sincerely with a pure and simple heart. Every day. We should serve others with sincerity, chant sutras, recite Buddha's name, meditate, and drink Buddha tea. Then we will have results. Never be cunning or use petty tricks. She believed in social equality and taught that everyone should be respected. Master always told us that everyone is equal, regardless of their religion or faith. We should try our best. To help anyone with difficulties who seeks our aid, regardless of a person's background and belief, as long as he is truly in need and sincerely believes in Buddha, he will get results. This is the so-called a sincere heart makes things come true. Despite her fame, Master Fu Hui continued to live her life simply, completely dedicated to her spiritual practice. She did not allow anyone to take pictures of her nor record her voice. She felt that she was as insignificant as the fish in the water and the birds in the sky. Her living quarters was a small corner room on the top floor of Daxing Benevolent Temple. Master Fu Hui stopped talking for more than 20 years and used only sign language. An attendant nun at her side acted as an interpreter. Because Master practiced a vow of silence. She often used sign language or wrote down simple words for disciples to explain to others on her behalf. Master would talk about the cause and retribution behind matters, and advise that they should be forgiving, let go, and do more good deeds. Therefore, many people came with a worried demeanor, and left with confidence. In her teachings, Master Fu Hui emphasized charity. Master also told us to do good deeds, make good affinity with people, help relieve disasters, and do all this quietly without seeking fame. Master did not accept any offerings and did not allow us to take money or offerings from others. Most importantly, Master Fu Hui taught that one should have compassion for all beings, human and animals alike. Master also advised adherents not to kill. Many people who received Master's instruction or assistance not only stopped smoking and drinking alcohol, but also stopped eating meat and became vegetarians. Moreover, because Dashing Benevolent Temple is located in a remote mountain, Master worried that it was not convenient for people to find a place to eat. So she asked us to cook and serve noodles of peace, free of charge. It was also to encourage people to be vegetarian. After she passed away in 1985, through her instructions, Da Xing Benevolent Temple was moved to the present address in Zhouhua Mountain of Tongluo Township. Today, the temple is famous in Formosa or Taiwan for its noodles of peace, rice balls of peace, and vegetarian meal of peace. Through her lifestyle, Master Fu Hui, the Waterian nun, proved that human beings can survive in good health without the need for food. 
completely relying on the grace of God in the form of cosmic energy for sustenance. Thank you, cherished viewers, for being with us today for Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Good People, Good Works. Coming up next after Noteworthy News. May heaven grace your life with blessed wonders. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.